And here we are live at the What's On at Elvin and Castle Facebook page. I'm Nick from Retribe, and joining me today is Paulina Tama. Paulina has just started studying, or just started research. Oh no, you've started your PhD. I knew I'd get it wrong. Um, you just started your PhD. What I'll do is I'm going to let you talk about it and introduce the community to who you are and what you do. Pauline, I'm really looking forward to the next 45 minutes. Thank you for, for joining us. But yeah, can you please introduce yourself, please? Hello, Nick. Thank you for inviting me. Pleasure to be here today. Um, yeah, of course, um, uh, I'm old. This is my degree in anthropology, and I'm going to start my PhD in September. And but I was a life coach. And when I did law as my undergraduate studies. I went to do anthropology of law. And together is my psychological policy degree a diploma and also my anthropology degree together with law and my life. I work in community and especially in in relation to those Paulina, um, I just want to know, like, um, the I don't know if it's mine or your end, but can you, your your internet's really crackly, and uh, you're kind of breaking up about every two or three words. No, I'm sorry. I'll let me check if I can do something with my, uh -huh. you know. Um, yeah, say something. Yeah. It's really crackly. <laughs> oh, no. That's oh, that's, better. that's a bit better. Okay, I'll try to speak louder. Probably is that. Okay. So, here. Okay, I think maybe just start again, and let's just see, because it was really, really crackly. So, I'm, I'm just hoping it's that it's okay. Okay, perfect. Okay. I am an Ecuadorian woman wearing masculinity. And bring her from rural and and psychology. I did diplomacy, but also degree as well in politics, violence, crime. And then when I was doing my master's degree in anthropology, I realized how violence and crime is also related to masculinity. And so when I decided to, to mix together like climate change issues, very masculine, how the relationship between men and heal the I'd like to away. You heal your relationship with men, but also the planet. Okay, I think that it's still pretty crackly, Pauline. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's kind of. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's just. Yeah, the video signals are. It's really, really um, poor quality audio. Oh no. Um, and I'm just wondering if it's. Um, is it just the signal that you have? Do you or can you tether to your phone or anything? Okay, try you. I, we might lose you for a second while you try to tether. Yeah, I, I can only because I know what you're doing, I can understand, but um, it's really bad and crackly. And now you're frozen, so you're tethering to your phone. Oh, folks, I hope this comes off because Pauline is a magnificent person, and I really want to get okay. into more about I'm what. I'm on my phone now. Okay. And it says that it's unstable and it didn't appear before with my other internet. So I don't know, it's going to work. This is actually better. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, so let's let's try again. Third time lucky, okay? Please introduce yourself. Okay. Okay, okay so <laughs> I've repeated this three times. Yeah. Okay. And I'm a Ecuadorian woman working in caring masculinity. And I'm doing my research through like the skills I've acquired from my degree in law and anthropology, but also my diploma in psychology. So what I do is when I was doing my master's degree in anthropology, it was in politics, violence, and crime. And I real realized how politics, violence, and crime was related to hegemonic masculinity. So what I decided to do is to see, well, uh, Hegemonic masculinities, but we can also heal the planet in terms of climate change. And then is when.
policy of the environment, uh, but working with men and how they, by healing the environment, are healing also themselves and the relationships with women and humanity, basically. Okay, um, it, it is a better signal. It's it's a little bit, but I did get most of that, and I think it, most of that went out. And I, I, it's really interesting because of the news that we've all woken up with today, with what's going on in uh, in Russia and Ukraine, and you know, people are talking about power and how you know a lot of these things are happening because egos are getting bruised. And Biden said this, so Putin has to react to this. And you know, the idea of we see power and masculinity at the top levels where who knows what's going to happen paulina you know with regards to a war or anything but i see it in all of my life now as a, as someone who sits in a white privileged male i identify as male body 51 years old um masculinity and the ideas of masculinity and power have been you know the guiding principles of my life and i found that at times well, many, many, as I look back at my life, they were very unbalanced and it created a lot of problems for me where I, I was brought up with certain ideas around masculinity that I, you know, real men have got to sit in these powerful bodies, be financially secure, be procreators, uh, date pretty women and drive fast cars and have nice watches and shiny shoes. And these are the ideas that, that, you know, were woven into my life that for me to succeed, or at least to be seen as successful, I need to have power. And that came in financial um, aspects. And when I didn't have that, I had to put on a facade and pretend. And I think that I, li I live in a world now with a lot of men around me who are in a lot of fear of just trying to pretend and put on masks around their perceived notions of what it's like to be a real man in today's society. Now, I'm, I'm interested to know as a, someone who studied anthropology and not necessarily, I don't, I'm not sure if you study the, the evolution of man, but in terms of masculinity, when did, when did this, the, the power struggle become really prominent where we've gotten into this, the position that we are in today? I mean, thinking that we've evolved over tens of thousands and millions of years, but when did the imbalance around masculinity um, in terms of your, what, what you've been able to see and where we've gotten to where we are today? Well, unfortunately, it's not because of my studies in anthropology, but because I've always been interested in feminism and oh. different types of feminism. But there are different theories. And one of them is when we started to evolve and we, decided to settle in a certain type of place, what happened is that because women were like, look at like the individuals with the ability to get there, well, they stay like, you know, harvest, harvesting and the crops and everything while men went out to, to basically hunt. So what happened there, some, some say, although we kind of have certainty really because it happened in different places too, is what happened there is that men then because they were able to take life to take life away from animals basically they had this type of power in contrast to women who were like was trying to be harvesting and dedicated to crops basically so that's one of the theories uh, we don't know if that's true or not but then it's been like lots of roles because at that point we didn't have evidence, for example, that women didn't have the same like muscles that men have that you can know it is now because of the evolution, how we've evaluated differently in contrast to men. But then it was like this huge body, muscle body, etc. And some people say, well, then is when everything is started. But then is, for example, in my whole career as a feminist, if I can call it a career, or in my whole activism, what I've seen is that, for example, some types of activism, they say, we don't need to be mothers of our couples. And at the beginning, I used to repeat that, we don't need to be mothers because it, it, that's to care for, right? Like child. But then 
I realized, well, probably what we need is that men also start to, to motherhood their couples, that they start to care for a woman too. So it really, I don't have an answer. When did they start? These started because there are many theories, but these are some of the hypotheses and, and anything like you, if you want to know more about that, that will be super interesting because you have the book of one of the pioneers of uh, feminists who is Simone de Beauvoir and she says, well, it could be there or it could be later. We don't have answers to that, but at least we know that something happened there when we stayed, like when women stayed a harvesting. So uh, when, but you know how people have ideas around feminism and um, what it means to be a, a feminist, because I, I mean, way back when, when I, when I studied at university, you know, I read, read Jeanette Winterston and Tori Moy, and I did a whole project on feminism and it meant a lot, something a lot different almost 30 years ago when I went to university um, in terms of when I was talking to my male friends about feminism is that feminists were seen as kind of people who hated men. Um, and, uh, and I was kind of mocked for taking a feminist course, but what, how did you become a feminist and what does feminism mean to you and, and to your studies and, and, and your work now? Just, just, yeah, I'm interested in that. Yeah. So my family has been a long story of being feminist really in Ecuador. And for example, my grandma was the first woman who decided to obtain like a NGO to help women who were victims of violence. And then my other one went the same. And sometimes there are women who are feminists and they don't identify or they don't call themselves feminists and that's okay. But that's when I started to know, like I grew up with feminism. And then through my life, I've been taught to or in contact with different types of feminists. When I was a child, I used to think like, feminist was to have equal pay or to have the, the right to be in equal positions of power and, or to be independent financially, which is very important, of course. But then I, I knew other types of feminism, within, which is intersectional feminism, which, is, which embraces these ideas of care and, of course, class and social class and ethnicity. And for example, something very interesting is um, one author from the States, she's called Bell Hooks, she passed away a month ago. And Bell Hooks said, um, sometimes like when white women think like they want to go to work, um, so like that they can be independent. Well, that's not what we like women want. What we want is also to have time with our families to care for them. We look forward to our retirement because we are taking care of other families, other child, and not ours. We don't have time with them. So there are different types of feminism, really. And sometimes we don't need to tag everything as feminist or not, or people as feminist or not. It's more a commitment with social justice, I think, and with, with care. I, I like to say that feminism, my feminism, is a commitment with care. And, Curry involves everything and everyone, of course. I think that's beautiful. For me today, what it means is, uh, is about equality, but also, you know, as you mentioned, like everything should not equal fair. I think fair is, is, is what I want to try to, because equality is kind of, um, that to me is older notions of, as you say, about, you know, pay and, and work and, you know, all the structures of, of capitalism equality, where, I really interested the, about the, 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 the female body, um, you know, it has the child, it gives the birth and it evolves. And then there are people who help raise the child and um, there are roles within us as humans to support and raise and nurture children. And I, I, I really like that, you know, the, the older grandmothers or the older aunties would really be very um, they would uh, supply a lot of the nurturing to the child because the, the, normally the person who gave birth, the woman who gave birth was very young and didn't have the experience that the older women had. 
So it was this idea of nurturing a child through experience and that it wasn't necessarily because you fit this thing, you have to be this thing. You know, you have to get married. You have to have a child. You have to have 2.3 children. You know, you have to raise that child. You, you know, all of these things, whereas fair is, is us being able to allow and hold each other to flourish and to shine in our roles as, as, as parents, as um, people who work. And I think, you know, people who, who, you know, who fill roles in, in, in our family and professional lives. Um, and I think that there's just not enough, I don't know, awareness around the idea that we don't have to fit into these molds and that really what we're here to do is to help nourish each other and, um, and help each other. And kind of my business partner always says we're here to polish one another's shine. Um, and that to me is, is around the idea of just everyone be fair and kind towards one another. So that's kind of my concept around feminism today, but um, that we just try to hold each other in a place to shine. But um, I'm, I'm interested to know um, how your studies have brought you into the, because the word masculinity is, is what your, your PhD is around, right? Can you explain more about your PhD? Yes, so my PhD is about masculinities and I would call it shit. Why? Because agro industry is like one of the huge problems and mainly the main problem for climate change and virus. So I was working for my master's degree with the Agroecological Network in Ecuador. And something very curious was when men were around of women, they were very much or very like replying or reproducing traditional masculinities. And then when we started to speak about plants and how they take care of their plants, the narrative just changed completely. Like it was a narrative of care and of love or of nourishing, like you say, together, of growing together. One of them, I remembered, he told me, when I, when I water my plants and they, they look beautiful, I look beautiful too. And when they grow, I feel I'm growing too. So then I decided, okay, I'm going to bring all my passions together <laughs> because I've always had this curious mind. Mm -hmm. And I will try to understand how touch works in caring masculinities, how it can transform the relationship and the narrative men have with themselves and with others and to see if it can be reproduced in the relationship with women in the ecological network. And then I'll see what happens. Right? So this is my project, like my proposal now. And, but of course I, I still have three years to start and to finish it. And we'll see what happens there. It's, it's fascinating because um, it brings me to my, my learnings right now as, um, you know, Again, someone who sits in a body that's made of bone and cartilage and muscle and tissue and skin and uh, water, you know, that um, it's a relationship that I have with my, I have a plant right here, <laughs> uh, right there, oh, yeah. that, that stares at me. And I have a relationship with a couple of plants there. And it is so true that when I'm in a good place with a relationship with me, which is a lot of meditation and a lot of writing and a lot of self-awareness and um, self-acceptance that I can, I all of a sudden start to see the other little things around me that, that we care for. But what I'm learning, Pauline, is that I don't know, I'm, I'm not some kind of, I don't want to be all spiritually woo-woo or anything like that. Um, but I have, I'm starting to have a relationship with the earth and with plants and with trees. Um, and I know there's probably going to be some guys, even my friends who might want to watch that, who watch this and go, Nick, you're, you're turning into a tree hugger and, um, um, some, some yogi or something like that, but it's not really, it's just that when I feel connected to living things, um, that don't talk back, you know, there, there, I don't have a relationship like I have with, with people in my life that I start to learn this relationship with me again. And it's in this relationship with me that I can start to, things just don't seem as stressful. They don't seem as on top of me. I don't feel so powerless. And I think that's a huge thing around masculinity, as you say, is that um, 
where we we sit in physical bodies that are a lot a lot stronger than the the feminine and um and we feel that that's our only way to express power is in violence or going to the gym or you know I'm not saying going to the gym or anything like that is bad but it's an expression of how it, how we use our muscles in an explosive way and it can be it can come out negative ways as you as you are very aware um so for me it's this journey around a lot of self a lot of work around being able to express my emotions um about being able to say when i'm scared or when i'm ha- happy or when i'm sad or when i'm angry and i have that now is a space where again it's kind of created around a relationship with me and it's a relationship with me that's enabled me to have a better relationship with the world around me so how how is it then do you do you how is it the importance of of men to be able to have a relationship with themselves so that further out we can have a relationship with our plants our personal people and then eventually the planet yeah so i, I think it's not just about men i think it's about everyone because we women were raised and brought up in the same system and sometimes people think well because you're women you already have another relationship with yourself that's not true like we also need to be more caring for us for ourselves and i can see that in a lot of them clients i work with and some of them are women too and they need and sometimes we reproduce the same dynamics with men like for example some of my clients i asked them at the beginning do you consider yourself emotional or weak oh no of course i don't it's like no and then uh, it's like okay So what is wrong with being weak or being ashamed or being emotional? Mm. And then they are like, "Do you want me to say that I am weak and emotional?" And I'm no, I'm just asking you. And it's the same with women because, for example, with some of the clients I work who are women, and I can analyze their relationship with me. They started to cry, and I didn't know what to do because I felt like I was a child. That the bear, so it's the same for everyone. To have harder job, to unlearn, to learn how to communicate with other men, to say I love you, or say, because people say no, I can tell other men I I like never I love you. It's also your Monologue, how you treat, and if you are hurting your, you like be like way powerful, be violent. Any guy will say I need to be violent. They will, they were brought up. They will say, like, oh, I need to show that I'm strong and that I have control. That's the thing. Having, and uh, not just the key thing for caring is or. Create caring masculinity. It's about everything. Control all times means perfection, yeah. and perfection according to what, to what goals, to what is perfect. Oh, Paulina, I'm just gonna say so. Just again, um, have have your has your Wi-Fi swapped back? Do you think to, from your phone has it jumped back? It's gone crackly oh. again. Let's Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm with my phone. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, she's frozen now. And I'm wondering, folks. Paulina? Is it okay? It's okay. Hi. <laughs> Do you know what I'm wondering? I'm wondering. I'm wondering whether or not we should um schedule another one of these ones when we have a little bit better internet. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because what you're saying, um I really really want to get this across because what you've what you're learning and what you've you your teachings, what you know is really really important right now more than I think I think it's a pivotal part of humans right now on this planet is becoming aware of the things that you are learning and that you can express 
And I would really like to be able to do it with a better internet connection. <laughs> yeah, of course. That would be my pleasure. I hope okay. I can get a better internet connection real. Okay, so what we'll do, I'm just going to end the Facebook Live now. Don't go anywhere. And I'm just going to apologize to everybody at the uh, at the Elephant and Capital community. What we're going to do is we're going to reschedule Paulina for um, another time where we can get a, a stronger internet connection. And uh, we'll probably just may maybe just do it as recorded. Um, and then we'll put it out or we'll do it as live and just put it out, but it'll be another time in the next uh, little while, but we will get it figured out because like I say, I think what Paulina um, has got to say is really, really important. So forgive us. We will be back. We'll let you know um, what's going on. Paulina, don't go anywhere. I'm just going to end this live now. Um, see everybody, see everyone later. Don't forget, join me uh, Thursday at 11 AM for a tough through tender gathering and we'll see you all later. And my apologies again, Paulina, hold on two seconds. Bye, everybody.